Hi, my name is Gary Cohen. I'm one of the founders and the president of Healthcare Without Harm. We work to help address uh, the environmental footprint of the healthcare sector, especially its climate footprint, and also to leverage its enormous economic purchasing power to transform the economy to be low carbon and toxic free and sustainable. So one of our strategies has been to leverage the purchasing power of healthcare to drive out toxic chemicals, to drive out high climate em emitting products and technologies from the sector. And we learned when we were trying to eliminate mercury thermometers and blood pressure devices that in the United States there are a couple of very large group purchasing organizations. And so they buy for thousands of hospitals. So they have enormous volume. So if you can get those group purchasing organizations called GPOs to take toxic products off the market, you can transform the market in a very quick way. So we were able to get one of those GPOs to take mercury products off contract. Immediately, 450 hospitals no longer bought mercury products. And then all the other GPOs, there were about five of them at the time, did the same. So within a very short period of time, we had eliminated the market for mercury-based measuring devices in the healthcare market in the US. We thought, well, that's a great strategy. We just need to work with these GPOs to design products that are low carbon, toxic free, and then have them drive the marketplace uh, to eliminate those products. The problem was that they uh, didn't really prioritize environmentally preferable products. They received uh, administrative fees from all the manufacturers, so they didn't have a real incentive to, to take one toxic product off the market and support another one because they were getting money from everybody, all the companies. And so even though we were providing each of these GPOs with environmental criteria as contracts were coming up about how do we get rid of PVC plastics, how do we get rid of uh, chemicals that are flame retardants that are building up on our bodies, how do, we, how do we sort of detox the supply chain in healthcare? They, uh, they didn't prioritize this work. And so at a certain point, we said, you know what? Maybe we should set up our own purchasing cooperative um, to, to signal the market for environmentally preferable products. So we got um, nine healthcare systems together, and they each put in $150,000. And Healthcare Without a Harm raised another million and a half dollars in loans to capitalize this new venture. And what we learned along the way were a couple things. Even though the GPOs, there were three at the time, controlled over $220 billion of the healthcare market in the United States, they didn't want to, they didn't want to give us anything to sort of design and, and, and model what environmentally preferable looks like in the market. They wanted to box us out. They wanted to, they didn't want us to succeed. So they went to hospital systems and said, uh, if you buy outside of our contracts, the, we're expectation, the expectation of volume, we're gonna penalize you. Um, secondly, they were getting administrative fees from all these companies that wanted to advertise on their electronic buying catalogs. Um, and so they said to the very large hospital systems, we'll give you most of that administrative fee back that we take from the suppliers because you're buying so much from us. And we depended on those administrative fees to run our new business. So what we learned here and where the failure was in my estimation was that we didn't recognize that capitalism trumps ethics nine, nine days out of 10. That, that the group purchasing organizations didn't want to give us any share of the marketplace. Even though they had $225 billion of, of market share, they didn't want to give us any. And the hospital systems who were financially strapped 
they wanted to get those volume discounts from the GPOs. So even the hospital systems that joined our purchasing cooperative, for the large part, they were still buying most of their, their products and technologies through their GPOs. And so we, it was a failure in understanding how the market was actually going to penalize innovation, how it was going to, they didn't care about mission at a certain point. They cared about money. And so it was a pretty huge miscalculation that saddled us with enormous amount of debt. So um, what we learned is that we needed to pivot. And so the way we pivoted is we said, you know what? We still, healthcare without harm still is the third party validator for what low carbon looks like, for what toxic free means, for what green products should be in the marketplace. The GPOs um, were not the experts in this space. So why don't we just double down on our own expertise and focus on the standard setting? We'll define what green products are and we'll allow manufacturers that meet our criteria to put a seal on their products. And then the hospitals can buy through their group purchase organizations as they like, but it'll still be us defining where the market should go. And so that's where we are now. Um, we're doing some amount of business in the co cooperative to pay for staff, but not nearly the level that we had originally hoped for. Uh, but we are continuing to, to define the marketplace for environmentally preferable products. The group purchasing organizations have all hired sustainability staff so they can show their hospital members that they care about these issues. Um, and we're still in a strategic place in the, in the marketplace, in the healthcare market, to continue to drive uh, toward a climate smart healthcare, toward toxic free healthcare, so that we have an economy where health and justice are, are embedded in its DNA. It was a very painful and uh, difficult lesson to learn, um, and it was an expensive failure. Um, but we have pivoted and are now continuing on our, you know, our sustain, uh, sustainability journey.